after they'd OD'd me, this is right afterwards, all of a sudden, there were billions of nets all over the walls. There were floating costumes from Mexico. The nurse looked like Joan of Arc floating in slow motion. And the Holy Spirit said, that's not real, Dottie. Now, and only now, will you learn to minister to people that OD purposely, that kill themselves. Right across the hall from me, a young man was in there because he had abused medication. His nurse was talking to him. He got up to get a drink of water. He saw what he thought was a bat coming through the window. And it went side past him, and he dove out of the... At that time, it was the seventh floor of the hospital and killed himself. But what I was seeing could only let me minister to that little boy if I could have gotten to him and said, Son, what you're seeing coming through the window isn't a bat. The doctors come in. I would describe everything I would see, but it would just amaze them. I'd say... But sir, they aren't there really. They would just look at me. What do you mean? You told me what you saw. I said, I know. But the Holy Spirit told me that it was hallucinations. You see, it's from the medication that I would overcome it. Fifteen hours passed and they were all gone. They were all gone. Now that put me in another vein to minister to hurting people. Are you listening to me? They had done all they could do for me. And uh, my dear friend, Rusty Goodman, was dying with cancer. And um, that day, I wanted to go see him so bad. I knew it was really bad. He was in another hospital. I think that's right. And um, I begged him to please take me, and they wouldn't. I wanted to see him before he died. A doctor came walking into my room, and I had two visiting pastors sitting there talking to me. And I was laughing, you see, because I was in the anointing. Found out this doctor was from Johns Hopkins Hospital in Baltimore, Maryland. And my main doctor had asked him to look at my files. He looked at it and he said, I don't know who this woman is, but she's going to die. And I, he said, well, just go look at her and see if there's anything we can do. He said, I'm wasting my time. And he was in his uh, street attire. He wasn't, didn't have his surgical clothes on or anything. So I didn't know he was a doctor. He walked into the room and I was laughing and joking. You know, and I said, hello, sir, can we help you? He said, uh, are, are you Joyce Rambo? I said, see, I told you a little secret, didn't you? My, my, my real name is Joyce Reba. Yes. I said, yes, sir. He said, uh, didn't you have this kind of surgery? And he started telling me that it's called the Drez surgery. Don't go near it. Drez. Remember that word. I said, yes, sir. I'm the one. He said, well, how can you laugh like this and carry on? I said, oh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. He said, the joy of the Lord is your strength. I said, yes. He said, aren't you in pain? I said, well, uh, whenever I'm not in the anointing, but right now I'm having a ball. I'm just having the best time sharing scriptures and talking. He said, uh, well, let me look at you. He, he was amazed. He said, I want to help you. So they flew me that night. I said, please take me to see Rusty. Just do that one thing for me. I don't mean, they didn't fly me. Let me back up. They didn't fly me. They rented a bus so they could keep me knocked out all night. I begged to go see Rusty, and I didn't get to go. And God took him home that night. And it was sad for me because I didn't get to see him because he was one of my hero writers. The man could write music because he had an inborn gift. Isn't that right, Steve? And I miss him. And I love him. But he's in a much better place, isn't he? They got me on the bus and they put me to sleep, got me to Baltimore. I went to the doctors and they started doing x-rays and everything. And they said, well, there's not anything else we can do for you. You just live with this. And then you'll probably become paralyzed all over, whatever. We can't do anything else for you. And I'm saying, God, you told me I was going to live. What is all this about? And after a while, the, the doctor looked at me and said, if you can get in one position, we'd like to x-ray you. I said, well, I can get in that position if, you, if you'll just let me get quick and get it over with. So they x-rayed and they found out that my spinal cord is supposed to float in a little bag. If you're operating normally, mine had attached itself to those raw nerve endings that had burned. So I was losing the right side. So I was like this, back and forth. And he said, now, okay, Dottie, we're going to go in. Now this, I love this. I love this story. This is a black doctor. He's beautiful. Christian, spirit-filled doctor, loved God. Everybody that worked on me in Baltimore, I'm telling you, loved God. Came in the room praising the Lord all the time. I mean, I was home free there, see. I felt safety. He said, well, Daddy, I tell you, 
I see that you are attached in one place. We can go in there, but I don't know if I can free you or not. If I don't, you truly will be paralyzed shortly and you won't live very long. So I took his hands and I crossed them like this and I put mine on top of them. And I said, in the name of Jesus, these hands, the Lord said, will cleverly free my spinal cord. And Dr. Reggie Davis says, I agree. When I was being put under the medication, I heard this gentleman praising God, praising in a heavenly language, praising God. And that's the way I went to sleep. I woke up in the IC, and there stood my buddy, Reggie, Dr. Davis, and he's looking down over me, smiling, looked like he had four sets of teeth. <laughs> He was so excited, and I looked up and I said, Doc, did we do it? He said, yes, you saw it, and I did it. And I said, no, I saw it, and God, and you did it. And he said, yes, 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 that's right. But he said, you were connected four different places, and we had to saw it like concrete. So they took some mad, excuse me, man-made substance and some fatty tissue of mine, wrapped around that spinal cord, so never again will it become attached. And also, they fused the empty holes that had not been fused, but they could not build me a rib back in there. So the pain stays, and there's nothing, nothing that would work. So finally, they sent me back home to not live long. I kind of thought, well, I don't know where we're going from here. I was on over $5,000 worth of medication a month, a month. And you got to look at my frame. You have to know morphine, backup liquid morphine, Dilaudid and all these things wouldn't normally kill a human, especially my side. And it was every four hours I was taking this. And I realized something was happening to me much more important than the pain. Now listen closely to me. If the devil can get your mind, he has no problem getting your body. Please listen to what I'm saying. But mine had been in reverse. He was getting the body first, and then he was coming with the medication to get the mind. Now, I remembered some, but five years had passed, and three years, I don't remember one thing that happened. Not a thing. I was repetitious. I was barely like this from the medication. I was so weak, and I was saying crazy things. I would find lyrics that I had written. I knew I wrote them because it was my handwriting. I knew it, but I didn't remember doing it. And one day, the Holy Spirit spoke to me in a house right here in Franklin. He said, in six months, I'm gonna do something incredible for you. And I just waited. Three months went by. Then he said, I'm gonna do something incredible. I said, Lord, what is it? He said, I'm gonna help you get off every bit of your daytime medication. I was so elated, I, tell you, I just screamed. I thought, hallelujah, because I realized my mind was being stolen by Satan. Now, if you don't need drugs, I'm telling you, don't touch them. Don't take an aspirin if you don't need it because it just takes something away from you. That's why people in the world, in the heavy metal and all this acid rock music, that's the reason they write such crazy things. Their minds burn. They don't, they're just saying silly things, and kids think it's cool. Christian people have got to write truth. It's like preaching a lie. We must tell the truth when we're writing. And when God let me know that, 15th of 7 o'clock in the morning on Sunday, I sat up in the bed, I said to my husband, no more daytime medication. It wasn't doing me any good. It couldn't touch this kind of thing. And I knew it. And man, everybody got upset. My family was upset. Couldn't believe it. I said, no more. And see, I didn't know these things. Thank God I didn't know this. I got off of backup morphine, liquid mac, everything I told you. I cold turkey. Just like that. I didn't perspire. I didn't have knots in my stomach. I didn't go crazy. I didn't know that you're supposed to have all those withdrawals. See, nobody told me about it. So I didn't know I was supposed to do it. It's that good, isn't it? On a Friday, I had an appointment with my doctor that gives my medication to him, and, and I walked in there with my sister-in-law, and she witnessed all this, and, and I had on this little silk outfit on, and I was all kind of acting silly, and I was modeling, walking around like this, you know, and, and by the way, they put a 14-inch rod in my back in the last surgery, too. There's so much, I told you, it takes a while to tell it. That way I'm stable, see? 
They have to keep moving me around. 